Podtacular Tip Show, Map of the Week is Foundation, episode 34 for the week of November 27, 2005. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo 2 podcast. I'm Fumo Jive. I'm spelled Chick. And I'm Salminator. Giggity, giggity. Glad to have you in the house again. It's here all week, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> here That's all right. Week. That's right. Well, this is the Podtacular Tips Show, where we talk about ways to help you guys level up and stay there in Halo 2 with general tips, noob tips, map of the week tips, and the random tip of the week. So, let's get started. Yes, let's uh, get started. Okay, see, our, our noob tip today comes from uh, Josh. Josh Meyer. says, uh, hi, hi, Podtacular, long-time <laughs> listener, first-time emailer. Glad That's to hear good. that. He said, my Slayer tip is when you play Slayer and you want to win, the object is, he put as, oh, wait, never mind, I, I was looking forward the object is to get as many kills as I can't read. Get as many kills as you can with little or at least more kill, kills and deaths. Otherwise, you'll just mess up the team you're on unless you're playing it by yourself and then you're just going to mess yourself up. Yeah. So. You know, Always try to go positive. Yeah. A lot of people can't figure oh, out that basic uh, premise, though, yeah. is that it's not about how many kills you get. It's your kill-death ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Which sometimes or kill is not assist true. ratio. I don't really That's count for Slayer games, guys. In a Slayer game, huh. it's just it's just on the kills. If somebody steals your kills, you get an assist. It doesn't matter because at least you killed them. At least he didn't like double kill you, but whatever. Yeah, well, that's all that matters, pretty much. But like everyone got has to realize that uh, you know, hey guys, this you know. If, if you're playing an objective game, people start hassling you about the kill-death ratio, and are like, okay, well, uh, I think I captured the flag twice, so uh, get off my back. <laughs> yeah, objective games is a way different, uh, exactly, way man. different thing there. Yeah, same thing when people get all pumped for getting all these kills, and then they, you know, the enemy captures the flag, and it's like, well, who cares about your kills, dude? They just capture the flag. Come on. <laughs> He's like, kill tacular baby. It's like, come kill, on, man. Kill the flag guy, come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You kill everyone but the flag guy, apparently. Just spawn killing the mole at their base, just leaves the flag guy. Yeah, I could see that happening. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, let's see. We got some yeah. general tips here. Okay, what do we got first? We have the two cheat says human weapons are really handy for taking an opponent, opponent down after their shield is dead. Try to keep one human and one covey w weapon on you. What I usually do, actually, I just have, you know, you have your power combo, noob combo, and BR. BR. Human weapons are pretty good to take down shields too, but plasmas are, are the best. I always make sure right after a duel I reload. I'm, I'm paranoid about reloading. Cause oh, me too. If you don't, you're going to, you're be, you'll be shooting the guy, you're like, what? What? My, my things ran out of ammo? What? Damn it! <laughs> well, the thing is, on a map with lots of action and it's uh, yeah. close quarters, when you, if you, you reload to. at the wrong time, you're screwed. Yeah, it's close quarters. That's crucial, guys. That's crucial. Okay, and did did I mention that human weapons don't overheat? This this can come in really handy for the sloppy sniper or the bad BR handler. Oh, I love bad BR handlers. They they <laughs> they have a head start on you, and then and then you just go in there and then you kill them. And you're like. He should have killed me, but he's bad. Anyways, try to master the sniper. I can't tell you how many of my friends have equal skill as me with other weapons, but always beat me because they have mastered the sniper. Play, play some custom games or team snipers, whatever. Just practice your sniping skills. What I what I've been doing? I've been playing campaign, and I just no scope grunts. It's fun. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and it's semi educational. It's fun, uh, it's educational, it's nutritious, and it's a good source of vitamin E. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, vitamin nice. G for grunt. <laughs> vitamin G. <laughs> While it may not always be fun, it is a lifesaver when playing a two bomb flag game. Get some people on defense. I am usually the only person that stays back on defense, and let me tell you, it has saved our butts quite a few times. I've had this one time where uh playing actually it was on uh, foundation. The guy on the other team was arming the bomb, neutral bomb, and he armed the bomb and I shot rockets at him and he didn't get to arm it, so the bomb bar stayed at red, so all I had to do was go to the other base, touch it and it was armed in a second. It was it was pretty cool. Awesome. So uh guys, defend. Make sure you defend. I was I, I was lucky there. Uh when being a sniper when being snipered at, run around all random like. The more unpredictable you are, the harder you are to hit. Try not to jump because you tend to move slower when you're jumping. That sort of gets you screwed over. Or just duck randomly if you're like on Quag. Just, just duck. <laughs> Find a look sensitivity that, cool. that suits you. If you're a lone wolf sniper, turn it down. If you're going hung ho shotgun guy, turn it up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. About you, Fumo, next guy. Well, it looks like Mr. Shoehorn writes in here, and he says when playing no shields or snipers and other Slayer, uh, other Slayer games, he finds that the majority of the time people tend to run around the map in one direction. It's useful for him to run in the opposite direction as everyone else. This lets him rack up the frags and subsequently win the game. Pretty cool. That would be, yeah. I think, counterclockwise would generally be the opposite direction usually, right? Because it seems to me that people usually run clockwise. <laughs> I don't know. That's I guess it just depends on the game. Yeah, yeah, especially on foundation. What I oh, like one of my strategy things is just I just keep running around in Team Slayer. Grab grab an ammo as you go and stuff. It it, it works pretty good. Why don't you expand that a little bit? Talk about uh, kind of your tips for foundation and how mm -hmm. your strategy generally goes in there, both in uh, Slayer games and objective games. Foundation I, I find is mostly good for custom games. I I'm I was I'm I'm neutral for this. I have my bad moments, I have my good moments. It's really all about rockets, BR, and shotgun. Shotgun can kick some uh, ass here, but uh, it's really you have to work with the team well here. Like if you guys are losing bad and you don't have the rockets, anything you have to you have to get like let's say dual magnums and just camp somewhere and just take them out because that's a pretty good combo. Just do, uh, not dual magnums, magnum with SMG. I like I like using that, especially if you're good at getting the headshots. You don't miss it. They it surprises them. Yeah, I don't really have much strategies for this map though, unfortunately. I don't play it much, but yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll go into a few that I wrote down here. Um, go ahead. I like this I like this map a lot there because well I like close quarters fighting and this is mid to close quarters. So, which makes it good, as long as you can uh, get across those stretches between rooms. Uh, anyway, uh, I got a few tactics that work really well here. Uh, first is, of course, get the rockets. These work in the normal devastating way, but in two particular ways in this map you get an advantage. First of all, there's no vehicles, of course, usually, but you can lock onto the turrets, and these turrets are devastating if left unchecked, so you have to take them out. Uh, second thing is that you can go up an airlift and get somebody on the wall just around the corner by shooting down. You can also do the same thing by just jumping around a corner and shooting down at a 45 degree angle, which minimizes yeah. the damage to you and gives you an easier target because you're shooting at the ground and getting the splash damage. So that's rockets and also turret rules on this map. I mean, I'm like a turret hog in this map. Yeah, you are too. <laughs> I know, and it, sometimes it gets me into trouble because I, I grab the turret before I look for if the opposite yeah. guy has rockets. But the thing is, if you can get rockets on the opposite side and get someone on a turret and guard them on both sides so people don't um, flank him, then he'll totally own that map if you, as long as you control that rocket spawn. Because people won't spawn in the rooms behind him, and he can yeah. just sweep back and forth and just fire in at anyone, you know, anyone he sees. Anyone's going to be in range for that turret. It's not going to spray let's too say much. The, let's say the two people who are defending, it would be good for them to have BR. So let's say if they're respawning from the other side, they could just guard that whole length of the hallway, the, those halls, and they could just BR them from the other side, gank them with grenades and etc. Yeah. It's good to have BRs too. Yeah, totally. Also, uh, when you spawn, uh, make sure to pick up those grenades in that room that you spawn in and the extra weapon if you're going to um, be fighting close quarters. Uh, if you want to throw grenades, just drop your dual wield and start chucking. Grenades can be particularly deadly on this map because you can bounce them off a corner, hit people just outside the rooms, 
and you can do a similar thing to the um, the BR slash uh, frag grenade combo um, with the SMG or whatever you got. Just do the best you can. Um, also, one thing I do a lot, it's kind of cheap, it's uh, a little bit of spawn killing. What I do is uh, walk out of the room, dual wield and get the grenades, and walk just past the wall to where I'm just out in the open, and then turn around and walk back right back toward the room. Someone will spawn in the room right in front of you with one weapon and no grenades. And you just dual wield against them, wash, rinse, repeat, and you'll rack up kills because they're outgunned every time. Do you do that for Rumble Pit? Um, yeah, I do that on anything that, I can... That, uh, that... That works well for Rumble Pit. I remember doing that. Just walk around a corner, they come out. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they're outgunned. You know, they can't do anything. So. Yeah, they're unless they're like really good and they know how to like grenade SMG coordination from there. But yeah, right. otherwise, you you got pretty you got them pretty much. Pretty much, pretty much. Totally by surprise too. That's the least thing I expect to get like spawn killed right when you reappear on any map. Totally. Yeah. Well, Spellcheck, why don't you go to the next one here? Uh, see, we got one here. It's from a JR98664. Because you. Uh, we've, we've said that joke before. I know. Huh? The funny yeah, thing he's is. A, he's a 98,000. <laughs> no, it's an overused joke. The funny thing is, most people don't go in the middle structure, therefore, it is one of the best places to hide. Just make sure no one sees you going into the middle structure. You normally hide quite well. Also, if you have the sword. Don't go running around with it. Or at least hot sword hide if you're gonna carry it around with you. Yeah, it's like it. It's like a sign on top of their head. Kill me, I have sword. Yeah, Kill exactly. me, I'm retarded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta practice a little bit to be able to get the sword out and strike, and then bring it right back in, though, because sometimes the timing can be a little off on that. A, a good thing with sword, you know those walls in front of the base. Mm -hmm. The entry, those big walls. They have four of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? I sure do. Okay. <laughs> you just hide there with a shotgun or sword, and people just come around. They won't even be expecting it. Nobody's usually It'll no one will spawn in that room when they horizontally come. from you, and, and it you'll just spawn. <laughs> Sweet, yeah, very cool. Well, uh, an anonymous person wrote in and said to get a BR and some rockets, and make sure your teammates will cover you. Super bounce to the center. Oh, bad form, and pwn them. <laughs> we do not condone super bouncing. Super bounce doesn't even work that well. You need, you have to be really good. Like you have to have, you have to be loaded to super bounce, and I don't even recommend to do it because you'll probably get killed in the process of doing it. And it's pretty cheap. It's cheap. They can't do it on PAL TV, so not everyone can do it that plays. So that's why it's cheap. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Uh. So yeah. Who's next? Who's ready to join the fight? I think Jublain is next. Mm-hmm. And Jublain says, avoid camping in the small rooms, a small, some grenades or some rockets, easily end your life. Vice versa, use grenades or rockets to flush out enemies. Do not run in after them, they'll be waiting with a sword or shotgun, or they'll assassinate you from behind, or, <laughs> or, or whatnot. Anyways, the turrets can also actually be fairly useful on this map. Get, get some teammates to cover you, then you can wrap up some kills. Rockets and BR rule this map, so uh, use them. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. <coughs> totally. Well, it's really it, hard to come back to the top after uh, they they have that combo. It's it's rare that you can actually come back up. No kidding. Very very well, rare. Inverse logic writes in. He says, uh, "Tip for foundation here. When in a bomb game, when in a bomb game, blah, man." messing up here. When in a bomb game, grab those spare grenades in your starting room. They'll come in handy when the enemy decides to go straight for you instead of the bomb. If they go for the bomb, then nade the crap out of the little house in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> the fusion cores. I could, see that. <laughs> I could just see this big the bomb, if it's neutral bomb, just flying in the air because it's been <laughs> just ganked by grenades. <laughs> Landing on a crossbeam at the top of the map. That'd be nuts. <laughs> I've had that before. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I've had it once. There's this little glitch, actually. In one of the rooms, they have this open vent, and you can actually chuck the flag, oddball, or bomb. I'm not sure about flag, actually, but flag and oddball, uh, oddball. <laughs> you oh, can man. chuck in the vent, and it's stuck there. Oh, you can't cheap. get it out. Yeah, it, it's pretty cheap. I've only, I've done it by accident a couple times. That's like the one on um, midship people used to use to throw it in that corner, where you can get it stuck. Yeah, fortunately, they fixed that. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we got next? Oh. El Nene 350 says, when the match starts up, 
go to the BR and most likely most likely you will see the other team going for the other BR. When he is there, shoot the barrels behind him and that should damage him enough for you to kill him in two to four shots. Yeah, I, that's that's pretty good. It's hard to have accurate shots from the other side. Uh, and uh, he also says this is a pretty well known thing, but if you see a guy run into the middle, just throw one for egg. This should blow up the core thingies and then annihilate them. Like I said, pretty well known, but for those who don't know, there you have it. That that's funny to see people get blown up. <laughs> it, it must be classic. <laughs> yeah, it's like running through a nuclear reactor or something, just yeah. waiting for a grenade to set it off. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's, uh, pretty insane. You're up, dude. All right. Uh, see, this one comes from a uh, painkiller. Painkiller 05. Very active guy. He, he's also discovered the little hidey hole of our tidy constantly on there. And the middle structure is a good place to hide the BR with the BR. The opening made it ideal to shoot out of and make it difficult for the enemy to shoot back. And also, there's that, that ledge in room two that you can hide up in and the BR people and. And they 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 they, 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 they freak them out and, and yeah <laughs> exactly yeah well, yeah see so your quality Jevage writes in he says in the second room on foundation the one with the big two on it uh, there's an excellent hiding spot when you're in the room jump up onto the upright missile or whatever that thing is in the room and then from there crouch jump onto the ledge above you. As if this ledge wasn't good enough, you can crouch jump from there onto the missile rack itself and be almost completely invisible from all directions, especially if you have darker armor. So me probably wouldn't be very well hidden because I have the blazing white armor. Um, also, the turrets are both the best and worst options on this map. Uh, on the upper hand, you can do a lot of damage in a team game, but on the lower hand, the map is small, so everyone will know you're, where you are. Uh, when you start using a turret, and since the rockets are so easy to get, the other team will be able to dispatch you quickly. So if you must use the turrets, only use them for two or three kills. You, you After get, that, everyone will probably them, have right? figured it out, and you can't stop them all. I, I I think if you if you get a good strategy going together with the rest of your team, though, you really can use the turrets effectively. If you just take out those uh, rockets, or just have a guy wait down there with rockets ready to blow anyone off that goes for him, you know, and then just have a guy on either side of you making sure nobody flanks you, you're cool. Then you can get three sides of the map, including the ground, and you can just take anyone out that comes out in the open. Yeah, it's a, that's a pretty good idea. I only do it for two or three kills because whenever somebody uses the turret on me, I'm so pissed. <laughs> I just get yeah. so angry. And then if they would like tease you with two or three kills, that that'll just make you so angry. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, they had a turret. No, they don't, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, everybody whines like when I when I. You know, rack up a bunch of kills with turrets too, because they're like, "Oh yeah, you only won because you got." You I, know, I want a it turret. Now. It's it like, to me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's there, you know. Got to use it. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Okay, year? Nick of Time says there are only two things you need to win. Yeah, you need to win on this level: BR and rockets. The sword can also be useful if you cap the numbered rooms, waiting for people to come by, and don't forget the rocket ammo. The sword being in the middle is a great bait, camp the center structure with a shotgun and wait for people to go for it. What I really hate about this level is that the fire, oh, that there is no sniper, sniper <laughs> games can actually be really fun on this level. <laughs> also remember, the BR is considered a power weapon, so only two of them can be played at once, and they only have a 15 second respawn, so be sure to scramble for the place you found it when you run out of ammo. Good thing to have. On this map, it's just BR and rocket combo if you're really good. And just camp that spot. Or you could just keep running around if you're playing against people that aren't good. Just keep running around the level. And as you go, just pick up the ammo. And if you you can make it so you're the only guy with BR, which is a good thing and a bad thing because then the other people don't get it. But a good mm. thing is that if you die, there's only one BR. They have to wait till the respawns keep coming out. So, yeah, that, that's... Uh, that's the hmm. strategy. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> All right. All right. So you got one here from Kinetechia. Yeah. Kinetechia. Yeah, you got it, dude. Yeah. Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Cause... Are you sure? Yeah. It's, Kine it's, Kinetechia. It's Kinetechia. Is there a trick? I, I, thought, I thought it was way complicated. Yeah, I, I thought it was. It looks like it. Kind of teriyaki or something. <laughs> teriyaki. <laughs> <laughs> teriyaki. Kind of teriyaki. Teriyaki, says. But that's not it, actually. 
Teriyaki it's, says. It's totally not it. <laughs> Close enough, dude. Teriyaki's good. Getting me hungry now, man. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty much uh, sure it was kind of teriyaki. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just I don't know. But it's Kinetechia because he called in. I gave voicemail weeks because I learned how to say it. So. <laughs> Kinetechia. Kinetechia. Right. So teriyaki says. I feel so retarded now. Okay? It's so actually so easy. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm gonna get some Japanese food now. Some teriyaki. And teriyaki. <laughs> teriyaki. Yeah, I might have to too soon. <laughs> I'm ready, man. <laughs> All, All right, right, so what anyways, does he say anyway? <laughs> kind of techie, it says, teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. You will not, you will not will. Win, you, maybe? Uh, win, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with win. Yeah. You will not win if you randomly go around shooting people. Do it right. If you can't do that, work in teams of two. Don't go alone, my yeah, friends. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. There is more to gain than kills. Don't bash your teammates with less kills than you because he probably saved your butt. With an assist. There's a thing to remember, guys. You know, it's double kill, triple kill, podtacular. I like that. That That's sweet. <laughs> I, I totally max my levels. and yeah. I know Freak's going to throw yeah. his, his headphones off and go, Dang, it's Belichick. You're so loud. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, and then, I have and a little you, general tip. This guy made me think of something about teamwork. Like, if you have nothing to do on the map, you have some power weapons, and you have absolutely nothing to do, just watch out, like, see if your friends are taking fire, and just help them out. Like, they might have uh, got surprised. Try to help them and take out the other guy. I, I try to do this. If I have absolutely nobody in view, try to help out your teammates for sure. I'm, I'm, I, I have to say that I'm a solo guy. I like to go solo. Uh, I'll teamwork, no problem, but I, most, most of the time, the reasons why I lose is because I go solo, I'm afraid hmm. to say. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a tip there, teamwork. Yeah, teamwork, Ooh. important. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that dude cheat has some more stuff for us here. He says, uh, you can't get to the top. So don't even try. The only way to do that <laughs> is to super jump. And we wouldn't want to do that now, would we? So no. uh, get the... Yeah, exactly. Uh, so get the rockets below the two open platforms with the turrets. They will do wonders. Speaking of turrets, hardly anyone ever uses them. Like I say, uh, as long as you have someone backing you up, you can get some major killing spree action. Just watch out for the rocket. Unless going for the sword, try to keep out of the middle. You are easy pickings, trust me. Scoped weapons are pretty handy in this map, so always be on the lookout for one of those. Um, not really a tip, but this map works really good for zombie and SWAT games. Uh, the shotguns at the bottom of the staircases are only good for use in the four rooms, or right outside of them for that matter. If you're following someone and they run into one of the rooms, don't just rush in after them. Smoke them out with a few grenades, and watch those blast cores. Yeah. Am I yeah. next? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say yeah. I'm go gonna have to go, uh, go with it, I guess. Got one here from uh, Bobo. No, no, no. Hold on. Before I even try to pronounce his name, I got an email from him. Okay. It's and like I, I, I've been wait, waiting for this the whole show. You know, I, I've been ready for this. It says dear Podtacular, Bobo Lich here. He spelled it B B O B O L I T C H. We wouldn't have that problem. You know. Said, my name often gets missaid. Even you could barely pronounce it. I get to pronounce as Bobo Licker, Bobo Leech, <laughs> Bobo Lick, <laughs> Bobo Like, and even Bob Della Leech. Bob. <laughs> 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 oh God! They had to be. I suppose it's a bit weird, but it is not German. Great show. Keep it up, Bob Bolich. Okay. Bob the Bob, you better you better Bob get my Lich. name right or else. <laughs> yeah. You threaten me, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, I got it. Sweet. Dear Pod Secular, I have a couple of tips for foundation on games with no shields like SWAT or zombies. Use the explosive barrels to your advantage. I can name countless times where because of them I got up to the kill tackler with one shot. Actually, three actually, it's BR. But all you need to do is wait till enemy runs past and. Kapow! <laughs> Dead. Like those sound effects there. That, that was... Wow. 
Yeah, you oh, even yeah. like you even sounded out his e. Uh, I could just I could perfectly sound. visualize a guy kapowing. <laughs> and he also says uh, on zombies if they've crammed you all into one room and you're the only zombie on your team and all these pushed out boxes, roll up all the explosive barrels in front of their defense, then get far away and shoot with your pistol or or your shoddy, like, make them try and get you, and kabang! Those boxes go flying in there like an eagle on speed! <laughs> i never Me seen either. an eagle on speed, guy... but I can... <laughs> oh, man, I wish I could take credit for that cleverness that he totally came up with that one. Eagle on speed. <laughs> they eagle sometimes speed. kill, but not too often. Now, rushing there with a sword, swinging, you know, mouth yelling, score a rising. It is possible to kill them all in one... On only one fury of death. Keep up the good work. That's pretty cool. Bobo Lich. And you better get my name right or else. Okay, so, like, to get an eagle on speed, uh, probably get a how the heck would you do just that? Flop on the ground. First, you have to capture the eagle, <laughs> and then you have to give it speed. Man. Oh. That's hard work. Ball, don't, 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 don't get a bald eagle because. Yeah, don't, don't get a bald eagle. They're endangered. You don't, don't want to get those <laughs> hooked on speed. <laughs> <laughs> man, bald eagles on speed are bad news, man. Anyway, well, that's the show. Tip show for this week. Next show coming up. Oh, wait, we got one more. One more this week, one more. One more this oh, week. Oh, man. The best part, man. How can I? Oh, man. I'm just going to slap myself right now. Nice. Uh, that's why you're the, I bought, why you're the sniper you I have you a are. dirty secret. I bought the Xbox just so I could play Barbie's Horse Adventures. Yeah, Ooh. dude. Hey, that game <laughs> is on the compatibility list for the Xbox 360, thank God. You're kidding. I, I was so happy when I saw that. It, it made kidding. my day. It is? Yeah, it, dude. That's that's why I spent so much it money on it. It is one of the elite 200 and something games available for the 360, so now aren't you that glad? makes me angry. That makes me angry. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> Actually, Major Nelson well, it, explained it. It's because some games just don't utilize a lot of the advanced features of the Xbox, so they just work well on the emulator. Oh, okay. So oh, it's like, not because like... they actually targeted that game to run on it. <laughs> oh. It was like, hold on. There's my, one of my favorite games, Kung Fu Chaos. I didn't see it on the <laughs> list. Man. Don't mention, actually... don't, don't mention Kung Fu Chaos now. Thing is, though, it's like, you obviously have an Xbox now, or, you know, those of us that are most likely getting a 360, uh, so why don't you just keep your Xbox? Or, you know, you could trade it in for a couple bucks or something, but just because keep it and sell, sell it. Cool. I managed to sell mine to uh, some people. That's cool. Yeah. Well, if you don't, you know, <laughs> sold to someone in line. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not, like, losing out on games that you already have, then, you know, it doesn't matter. But it's like, if you have games that you want to play and it's on the list, just keep it until, uh, you know, until the compatibility list, the emulators get up to speed, and then sell it from there. Anyway. Well, this, here's one thing. This is like, well, it's like, oh, this is a good reason to keep it. Like, games, like, new games, like, brand new Xbox games, like, 50 Cent, Bulletproof, totally not compatible. Good thing, it isn't? Man, I don't want to play that. Uh-uh, it's not. It isn't. That sucks. I think all the Xbox games that should come out has to at least be 360 compatible. Yeah, if it's, if it's gonna come up, come out now, it's got to be compatible. Yeah, that that's ridiculous. That'd be nice, but then again, the you know the PS2 even had problems playing PS1 games in some cases. So yeah, even though they yeah, said it was 100 percent backwards PS2 compatible, gay. so PS2 likes men. So <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's it for today's show. Oh, uh, thanks for. T <laughs> Dude, sound like me now. Come on, random tip of the week. Don't don't pull don't pull a fumo jive. <laughs> yeah, oh. dude, pull a fumo here. I don't want to re-record it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was cold. Ooh. Cold as ice. Cold as Canada. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be Colder than fat kids waiting for the 360. <laughs> well, we got the random tip of the week, and somebody actually sent this in. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that person's name right now. They'll probably post in the forums with all of their hate mail saying, It was me, jerks. <laughs> but uh, yeah. he sent in the random tip of the week for our favorite game and yours, Barbie Horse Adventure. So he says, and you can put it on your 360. Oh, yeah. So don't worry. Good thing. Yeah. Full date. <laughs> so he says, uh, when you become a level 26 on Barbie's Horse Adventure, the whole game changes. 
make sure you go for those pink hairspray power-ups and those moisturizing cream orbs. This thing's rock. And also make sure that you do not get eaten alive by the evil clone Kens. And <laughs> <laughs> make sure your trusty steed stays happy and give her lots of edible cosmetics as you gallop through the tulip fields. <laughs> That's I, I better do, keep that in mind next time I play. <laughs> good, good. I hope that really helps you uh, level up beyond level oh. twenty-six. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll be there eventually someday. <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> Thing is, there's modders all over there, so you know, lots kind of, of modders. In yeah, the modders. Oh, they they have flying flying ponies. That that's <laughs> flying <ridiculous>. ponies. <laughs> Flying and and their ponies, and... they, they have this special pooping power, and it, 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 you just your pony gets screwed up once you get a landmine of poop. Woo! Ew. <laughs> Damn otters. Didn't, I didn't know they existed until I played that game. I know, man. There's just so many fans of that game. It's just like, you know, people that play it, they just get all enthusiastic, and then they start getting... They, they're, they're creative. They are. Landmine of poop. Jeez. Never thought that was possible. <laughs> That's one thing about Barbie Horse Adventure fans, they are creative. Well, Which one? Uh, oh, Bar Oh, I thought you said Mario. I'm like, what? <laughs> Mario Horse Adventure. Talking about the same thing? It's me, Mario. <laughs> it's Mario. It's me, Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our show, guys. The Pod Tiger Tip Show. Coming up next show is going to be the Customs and Call-Ins, where we talk about lots of cool custom games people send in, uh, including some cool ones for Foundation. And we talk about Tales from the Foxhole, your voicemails and segments, and get into some cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. Until then, I'm Fumo Jive. I'm Spell Check. And I'm Salminator. Alright. <laughs> All right, peace out. There's only one thing left to say. Dun, 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 dun,